What's up YouTube and Amazon? Jefferson here with Sumi Gang Production. And this is the Lil Box Q1 4K Android Smart TV Box. CGen, a company on Amazon, is awesome for sending me this unit to review and I'll provide a link in the description box below. This device allows you to stream Netflix, HBO Now, YouTube or any app on Google's Play Store since it's running Android version 4.4.4 KitKat. You're also able to surf the web with a web browser. I personally prefer Google Chrome. It has an internal storage of 8GB but in reality you're only able to use 6.06GB of storage. You're able to expand the storage up to 32GB since it has a full size SD card on the back. This also has 4 USB ports, 3 on the side and 1 on the back. An SPDIF port which is an audio port, an AV port, HDMI, Ethernet but you're also able to connect via Wi-Fi if you like, and a 5 volt power port. This little guy can pack a punch. It's capable of handling 4K video if you're into that. It's powered by a Penta Core HD graphic GPU, 1GB of DDR3 RAM, and it uses the Rock Chip RK3229 Quad Core Cortex A7 1.5GHz 64 bit processor. You're able to mirror cache your phone or tablet to your TV, but I think it's only compatible with Android devices. I'm keeping it cool while you keep smiling, taking all the things I'm thinking. Oh man, oh man, I am like you, so I won't prove I'm what you're feeling, girl. You're also able to use a wireless keyboard and mouse as long as it's powered by a 2.4 GHz USB. Unfortunately, this does not have Bluetooth connectivity and it will not accept a Bluetooth USB device to bring Bluetooth to this. There are several apps pre-installed when you first power it on. I think the only app that's useful amongst them is the Kodi app. If you're unfamiliar with Kodi, it's a streaming app that allows you to watch movies and TV shows. The layout looks to be in beta form, but it's definitely usable. You're able to stream movies not yet released on DVD such as The Revenant, Batman vs Superman, and well you get the idea. At first it's a little intimidating, but if you just browse around, you'll find pretty amazing things. You have to go on add-ons to see your options. I recommend using Exodus for streaming movies and TV shows. Once you find the movie or show you want, you'll see a list of links. These are the different providers for what you want to watch. It'll also tell you if it's available on HD or just standard definition. I usually select the first option and that's pretty much it. This also allows you to download the subtitle of the movie or show you're watching. This is a spoiled way of watching a movie or show. When you first power on the TV box, you'll be greeted with the media box launcher. 
It's very simple, but if you're not into that launcher, go to your settings, click on the other tab, which is next to the advanced tab, then click more settings tab, scroll down until you find the home tab, then switch it from media box launcher to launcher. This will use the traditional Android launcher. The traditional launcher will also allow you to insert widgets and other apps. And you'll have five home screens to work with. I want you close and close and close enough now. Oh man, oh man, I am not really ever known for being speechless. But now, but now, somehow my words roll off my tongue right into your lips, girl. I'm keeping it cool while you keep smiling, saying all the things I'm thinking. Back to the advanced setting I showed you. This is also where you're able to control other options like sound, transfer your app from your internal memory to your SD card. Just click on the app listed, scroll down to move to SD card. And when you back out, wait for several seconds and the box should be checked, letting you know the app has successfully transferred. You're also able to add different online accounts like Gmail, Facebook, etc. And you'll also be able to access a developer option too. At first, when typing in anything, you hear an annoying noise. To turn this off, go to the advanced menu option, find language and input. Unfortunately, with this part, you will need to use a mouse. Click on the slider looking switch tab and uncheck the sound on key press, which should be the third option right above the text correction. I think one of my other favorite features of this TV box is how it also accepts YouTube Red. You can stream any video on the YouTube app and when you go to the home screen or surf the web, the video will still play in the background. The remote control is straightforward and simple to use. I love how you can program this controller to your TV so you could just use one remote control. When I read the instructions, it wasn't clear on how to properly program your remote control. If you're interested in programming this remote control to your TV, click here to watch that video. The Smart TV Box controller is powered by two AAA batteries and unfortunately they're not included but it does come with an HDMI cable, which is about 3.3 feet. The other neat thing about this remote is how you're able to use it as a mouse. It's not that practical because you have to use the arrow keys to move around. I wish the mouse functioned like a Wii controller, but it's a nice feature to have in case you become lazy. Other than that, that's pretty much it for the Lil Box Q1 Smart TV. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comment box below. I'm more than willing to answer any questions you guys may have. If you like this video, or if you just found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Helps out my channel a lot. Like always, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. These two part, this plastic knob right here, and you could manually adjust accordingly to get that perfect level on your desk.